Hello, and welcome to the Episcopal Church of St. James the Less, online. This week it is the second Sunday after Pentecost, and in our Gospel reading today, we hear Jesus sending his disciples out to share the good news and to heal people of their diseases and illness, and it sounds like dangerous work, frankly. He keeps giving them these warnings about things that might go wrong, but he assures them that no matter what, God will be with them, and the Spirit will speak through them. And so that's what today's songs are about, traveling to do God's work and trusting that God will be with us on those journeys. Our first song today is the hymn of service, Here I Am, Lord, by Dan Schutte. And I will invite you to sing or hum along with this, and all of the words of these hymns will be printed in the description of the video on YouTube. Um, today, you'll see I am fortunate to have the help of my son, Zach, playing guitar. So here is Here I Am, Lord. Three, four, one, two. i 
Now, at the time he wrote, Here I Am, Lord, Dan Schutte was a young Jesuit studying theology. And he wrote the song on very short notice for an ordination mass. The ordination was on Saturday, and his friend asked him to write it on Wednesday. And I'm pretty sure I have been guilty of giving other musicians tasks like that on such short notice, especially the musicians who live in my house. And I apologize. But Schutte was nervous about the task, understandably. So, like the disciples in today's Gospel reading, he asked God to speak through him and help him out with the hymn. And you'll hear, or you heard, in the chorus of that hymn, it sort of reflects his unease about the situation. Rather than proclaiming, It is I, Lord, he asks, Is it I, Lord? And that uncertainty is a very human feeling, and it may be why the song is so relatable to so many of us. Our next song today is by a Northern Irish worship leader named Robin Mark. The year was 1994, and Robin Mark was watching one of those televised year in review specials, and 1994 had been a dark year. The Rwandan genocide had just taken place, and the Irish Republican Army had just declared its first tentative ceasefire after years of fighting. And Robin Mark wondered whether God was really in control. And he felt the Spirit assuring him that the great forebears of the faith, like Elijah and Moses, had lived through turbulent, violent times as well. So then several weeks later, the pastor at his church preached on the Valley of Dry Bones, and something clicked in Mark's mind. The song, Days of Elijah, came together even quicker than Here I Am, Lord. Robin Mark wrote the whole thing between services in the church kitchen. It took him about a half hour, and the congregation learned it at the second service which is incredibly impressive and a lesson in why we need to maintain our church kitchens. So, here is Days of Elijah by Robin Mark. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Our 
next song is by the gospel singer Andre Crouch. Crouch was a monumental figure in gospel music and the Jesus movement of the early 1970s. And besides being an excellent singer and songwriter and pianist, he really acted as a bridge builder in those movements. In gospel, he was one of the first band leaders to apply current pop music sounds to gospel songs. Now, Sister Rosetta Tharp and Aretha Franklin had done the same thing earlier, but they were always crossover artists. They straddled the worlds of sacred and secular music. Basically, they made pop music sound like gospel music. Whereas Crouch never left gospel music. He made gospel music sound like pop music. And so if you listen to an album like Soulfully from 1972, which I happen to have a copy here, uh, you'll hear the arrangements and the guitar tones sound a lot like what was happening in Motown and Philly soul music at that time. But there's no doubt that he made these songs to be sung in a church, because if you look at the back, you'll see you can order a music book for your choir of all the songs on this album. Andre Crouch was one of a handful of black musicians to become popular in the Jesus movement, this sort of hippie movement uh, in the late 60s, early 70s that started on the West Coast and then spread across the country. His best known song, Through It All, is a little bit like Lift Every Voice and Sing, which we sing every year around Martin Luther King Day. It alludes to struggles over a long period of time, and it celebrates God's faithfulness through all of them. And that's something that would have special resonance for those involved in the civil rights movement, but it's also a message that applies to everyone. The song has become a standard, and you'll find it in hymnals. I have it here in something called The Other Songbook from 1984. It's a collection that's a nice mix of contemporary Christian music and gospel hymns and even some kids' songs. And the song reminds us that even on the darkest parts of our journey, God is still present. So here is Through It All. Uh, two, three, four. I've had many tears and sorrows. I've had questions for tomorrow. There have been times I didn't know right from wrong. Stay. 
I love that part in the third verse where we sing, if I'd never had a problem, I wouldn't know that he could solve them. I'd never know what faith in God could do. As we've seen over the past few months, our country has problems, <laughs> and we as individuals have problems. But it's worth asking, in the midst of these problems, how might God be working to solve them? And not just fix the problems to get us back to the status quo, but how might God be planting seeds in us to help make life better for everyone in our country, to make the world look more like what God intends? Well, our last hymn today is from our hymnal 1982, uh, it's number 637, I believe, How Firm a Foundation. It was written by an anonymous lyricist who we only know as the letter K, and it was first published in the late 1700s by John Rippon, an English Baptist minister. And Rippon's book had a very long title, A Selection of Hymns from the Best Authors, intended to be an appendix to Dr. Isaac Watts' Psalms and Hymns. That was the official hymnal. So that was sort of the other songbook of its day. The tune we usually sing it to, called Foundation, is American, and that was um, published about 50 years later. But when we get there, pay special attention to the end of the third verse. This is a line that I had never noticed before. But the anonymous author has God say to us, I will be with thee, thy troubles to bless, and sanctify to thee thy deepest distress. God sanctifies our deepest distress. He takes our grief and our trials and somehow makes them holy. So how might God be sanctifying? the distress of our nation and of our hearts, and making it holy. Something to think about. So I hope these songs are a blessing to you during this week. Thank you for joining me. And here to close us out are the first three verses of How Firm a Foundation. One, two, three. <laughs> Say